one place for four years studying a course. I'm sorry, I'm breaking your heart. But uh, university is not for people like me to stay for four years. I could do with two years, one year. But for four years, incredible. So I ran away, my parents didn't know I had left. And fortunately, I was able to come back with a novel, which my father was very proud of, which I think everyone is, is cool with. Now, my new novel is about the is about Hong Kong, and Hong Kong people like to call themselves Hong Kong people, I don't know why. Uh, just like American people call themselves American people. The people, I don't know why they act people too. Um, in 2010, I was here in Hong Kong for the Hong Kong Literature Festival, and uh, the Hong Kong immigration fast, they denied me entry to Hong Kong from Delhi because I was coming from Delhi. Uh, they didn't believe I was invited to come and speak in Hong Kong. I could this, this little black boy, who is he? So uh, fortunately for me, the Nigerian consulate in Hong Kong had to petition them and my visa, uh, sued them, and my visa was issued later. And I arrived in Hong Kong, and I really, really, really love Hong Kong. This is the reason why my second book is based on Hong Kong, and also on Mexico which is a country I, I admire a lot. I'm not going to bore you guys at all because I know that we belong to the, in this, uh, we're in the same age group and uh, boredom is not good for us. We like to party and do all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to be precise, sharp, and I mean, we have to make a very interactive group if we can. The problem here is most most people in Africa or in Nigeria, I can say, talking from experience, know a lot about China. On the plane to Hong Kong, I was with, most everybody on the plane was Nigerian, and they're, they're coming to Hong Kong, they're going to Guangzhou, they're going to a lot of places in China. Then, when the Chinese come to the continent, African continent, they isolate themselves, they move to one particular place, and they just hide. They like to be themselves. I'm not angry at the Chinese. No, not at all. But we're talking about integration. We're talking about, I mean, in the whole class, we only have this guy who looks like me here. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And th this, is, this, is, this is not so in France. In France, I don't feel I'm a black man, never. I've never felt it before in France. I feel France is the most multicultural country in the world. This is where I walk the streets of Paris without thinking, oh, somebody is saying, who is this little black man? Okay. <laughs> Not that I could feel inferior to anybody, but the thing is, every street in Paris has a Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. Every street in Paris has a Chinese restaurant. And uh, how they do it, I don't know, <coughs> but let me, let me explain it way. These Chinese guys, they speak French, they speak English, and they speak Chinese as well, without stuttering. It's very funny to me, very, very funny. Because they never integrate with people, yet they know their language. When they come to Nigeria, there is a Chinatown, and every Chinese man goes to Chinatown to live. So you don't get to somewhere on Victoria Island in Lagos to see Chinese people living side by side with Indians or the, the Nigerians, their hosts. And when I was trying to write this book, I went to Chinatown in Lagos, and I tried to speak to um, the Chinese people there. These guys wouldn't talk to me. They say you're a journalist, because apparently there are some illegal businesses that are running. So they thought I was coming to interview them and write about it in the newspaper. But no, no, I was only coming to uh, hear the Chinese man talk. It's very funny that The world is very global. We believe we all come from the same source, the same God. But we all have different mentalities, different lifestyles and everything. And this is the reason why I have decided as a writer to strategically write about racism, about culture, as a way to bring the world together. It's not going to be and we're not forcing anybody to come together, but 
now like black people are begging Chinese people to please be our brothers. But the truth is, if we're going to do business, we must have to understand ourselves. We must have to we must have to kill stereotypes. One thing I love about Indians, Indians everywhere is they don't have they have Indian cultural center, yeah, we know, but they don't have it in their town. The father imprisoned the son, he stole himself. There's a, a, a different chapter in the book. You're speaking too much big, big grammar for me. I am Hong Kong people. We don't like him too much grammar. <coughs> Simple story you tell me now, you're making it very difficult story. You're just telling me something that is a happen in Mexico. I understand you. Boom. You started to speak too much grammar, too much grammar. Why? Why are you doing that to me? I am Hong Kong people. Try to understand, okay? I tell you something. When I travel go Nigeria, I'm not happy at all. I think I'm going to become poor, but see me today. I'm a very rich man from Hong Kong. Nigerian people respect me very much. They're telling me, you China people, very industrious people. I'm not understanding what industrious meaning until I am asking Chan. Chan looked me in the eye and laughing a very big laugh. He's saying to me, industrious meaning hard work. I nodded my head because truly China people had working people. Sometimes, I tell Nigerian people, say Hong Kong people, not China people, but I know they're not understanding what nonsense I'm talking about. See, I was born same hospital as Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan, my childhood friend, friend, but he just forgetting everybody he growing up with. I showed Jackie Chan not to remember my name again. He not knowing I giving Chan his name because of him. He not knowing this thing, and I'm angry because of that. Jackie Chan go primary school with me. He eating my lunch in primary school. He very stubborn somebody then. I telling you when we are going to school, Jackie, you be a great man. Now Jackie become great man, don't forget me. I'm not happy with Jackie Chan. Not happy at all. But most people like to forget your childhood friend. Five. I not like to be Chan look me in the eye, so it making me remember Jackie Chan. My son Chan not do anything at all in Lagos. All he do is sit in restaurant, eat and drink Chinese. <coughs> he likes chow mein very much and rice noodles with chicken soup. He eating everything like I don't feed him all the time. Customers is eating, Chan is eating, customers is drinking, Chan is a drink beer. I cannot talk to him because he will be becoming angry with me and he will tell me, fuck, I don't like it. Yeah, fuck, that is why. I don't like it at all. My restaurant in Ikeja, very big restaurant. China people from everywhere in Nigeria, in Nigeria coming there eating and eating. Everybody telling me, ah, Paul, very food, very good. Your food, very good. Even Singapore people tell us that. Vietnam people. I will tell you one truth. Nigeria is very good for business. Ben Chan is getting me angry. He reminded me of Ben Jackie Chan wrong come my house very early morning, telling me you're going to school late. That Tisha will punish it. Jackie Chan, very stubborn and intelligent that time. I don't know what happened now. He's just forgetting me. He's just forgetting people he's growing up with. Too bad for Hong Kong man. Hong Kong people don't behave like that, and he knowing that very much. I go to Nawa Primary School with Jackie. Jackie, not even his real name. He lying about it. His parents born in him as Jang. Chan Konsan. Chan Konsan. But because he wanted the world to know him, he called himself Jackie, liar man. See, I know Jackie very much from childhood. We grew up together for Victoria Peak. He looking like a doll, very short somebody. Now he famous, he's not talking to any childhood friend again. Very bad for a Hong Kong man. You know Hong Kong actress Lily Huang? No? I'm um, tell you the truth. When they called Jackie to act for in their film, I am there. I told Jackie, do it. He's like four years or something. Very small then. I tell Jackie, act, act, like the Hong Kong people see you. I encourage Jackie. Jackie become very famous and forgetting. You think I jealous Jackie? No. I tell you one incident. 
that happened when we growing up. I am returned from school with Jackie. He seen this girl fucking the streets and he calling the girl name, saying many, many things. The kid go telling his brothers. His brothers are looking big, big. They come into Jackie, three men. I don't know if they are big, his brothers, but they are looking same. They are fucking to us. Jackie begin to shake, 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 shake like woman ass. He not knowing where to run to. I look at him and thinking, if I am saving this boy, he will respect me. I do. Pija. Three boys looking themselves begin to run. <coughs> I pursue them. I stop. I look back at Jackie and he's smiling. He's saying me, thank you in Cantonese. I say not mention. I follow Jackie go his house. Then he reaches his house. I go into my home. Then I get him home. I go to my bedroom, stand in front of mirror, look at myself and how I chase three boys away. I smile. I not knowing I can do that at all. So, when I remember everything I done for Jackie, I feel terrible. When Jackie moved to Australia with father and mother, he not even tell me. It is pissing me off. I get very mad with Jackie, very, very mad. When he returned from Australia, he becoming a big star. But his movies not doing in market. People watching him and liking him. Slow, slow, Jackie becomes superstar and not see me again. He's training me very much, very, very much. Thank you. Sorry for the inconsistencies in uh, the Chinese uh, Hong Kong accent. I've tried so much. It, it has taken me almost two years to get this. But I'm not sure I've done enough work. But the truth is, um, if, if I get a backlash from Chinese people, like, oh, this is not the way we talk, it's fine. But it's also about stereotype. It's about how we see the other. How do you see African people? How do you think Africans are poor? Do you think we are unintelligent? Do you think we don't know anything? Do you think we cannot politically move? Do you think we are economically slow and weak? All these questions, they are questions that exist in the minds of every Asian, every European, every South American, every body, you know. Because the image you, 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 you see on CNN, there are images of Africa with poor, penniless stricken people, people who cannot feed themselves. Well, me, I'm not, I'm not like them. I don't know where they get those, those pictures from, but it's fine. Everyone has to, 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 to create an impression. Everyone has to, to do his business. And the people who are producing these this, uh, pictures to the world, they're making money out of it, it's fine. I understand that, especially seeing it. Anyway, um, Dr. Moore, thank you very much. I'm sorry I didn't thank you earlier. No, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much for coming and for well, agreeing to talk to us. Thank you very much. Yeah, can, I, can I maybe ask uh, some questions? Yeah, maybe, yeah? Because in your first book you talk about Indians, yeah? And uh, from what I read from the reviews, they said it was actually very well received by Indian people and they liked the picture you painted about them. So what exactly, how did you see them? How did you see Indian people? Um, in all honesty, I love Indians, and I like to, I like each, anywhere I go in the world, and I see Indians. I went to Portugal once, and I saw Indians, I just went to them, I started speaking Hindi, and I said, how did you learn Hindi? I said, I learned it in Delhi, and then we become friends. The Indians are very, just like that, they're just, yeah. op they're just open to the world. <laughs> and um, and when, 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 when the book came out, the Indians in Nigeria actually paid more attention to the book than Nigerians. Everybody was saying, oh, you, sh you would have paid somebody in India to write this book. Because this doesn't read me. Like an Nigerian wrote it. And I said, no. I, am, I studied anthropology in university. And I listened to people talk. I studied people's behavior and conversations. I, when, when I'm sitting in an airport, I'm listening to people talk. I could have an earpiece clogged in my ear, but they don't work it. I just listen to people talk. I want to know how, how. I mean, the, the way Hungarians and Czech people talk. There are these things I study every day. How do they speak English? How do English people speak English? And uh, you know, honesty. I think wherever I am today as a writer, 
if I have achieved anything, it's because of the Indians. Yes. Yeah, but why do you think so? Why would you... They, pay, they, they, they placed me on a pedestal. You know, there is a famous Indian writer called Shobhadi. Shobhadi is like the, film, the most famous writer in India uh, before Aranda Choroi. And she was always writing about me on her blog. And for her to have taken note of this writer who has spun a tale about their country or them, she actually endorsed it, you know, like, Made it look. Do you have a copy of the book here? I'm passing it to Okay. So it, she actually made it look like this guy is another uh, William Darenport. That is a very famous historian who writes about history, Asian history. His name is William Darenport. He, he lives in Delhi. So he, I think, I, I think all, all yeah, the hard work, um, talent is never enough, but you need people to tell people what you're doing, the word of mouth. So it was when Indian said, oh, this is it, the Nigerian said, oh, it's a subject. Uh, and can you tell us something about the Nigerian literature? Uh, who are the new upcoming up authors and about the controversy, like uh, you have uh, some comments about well-established authors. <laughs> You can tell us more about your views on Nigerian literature? I, 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 I think it, it, it's not going to be nice if I promote those writers. I think I want to promote myself only. <laughs> yeah, because um, the, the, the Nigerian writers, they never talk about me because they feel, oh, he's very arrogant, he's rude, he talks shit about us. So I'm not going to mention their names here in Hong Kong. They should come to Hong Kong. Yeah, so. So Chino you know Achebe? Um, he's dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like his uh, uh, work. Uh, yeah, I liked I liked uh, Chi, Chino Achebe's Antilles of the Savannah. And I read this fall apart when I was nine years old, and I was born in this small village in, in Nigeria. And uh, my father, my my mom is actually my mom's sister is actually first Africa's female writer. Yeah. My name is Flora Mwapa. And uh, I was... So we can promote her, yeah? Yeah, I can promote that one. She's <laughs> my family, so it's fine. Uh, but all that's no, you know, it's not their names anymore. So uh, Chino Achebe's uh, writing was introduced to me by my parents at home. And I have an uncle who, who had a bookshelf full of books. So I was, I was stealing books from his house. But he didn't see that scribe because it was book that I was stealing. They say it's fine, it's fine. He's not stealing money, he says it's okay. So I was stealing books almost every time I I, I, I read every book written by Ajabe. Yeah. And uh, it pissed me, this far apart pissed me off because the language was too simple as a child. I needed to read something. You know when kids are reading uh, Harry Potter books, they, they, they're very excited because the language is not that simple for them to um, uh, swallow or stuff like that. So I was angry that Things Fall Apart was written really, really in a very, very simple language as a child. And now that I've grown up, when I look at it, I feel, oh, this is for kids. It's like Chica and the River, which is a book for children at the Bay Road. So it's for children, but Things Fall Apart is not for me. That's what I feel. But I'm wrong, you know, because everybody keeps telling me, oh, why would you say such thing about you not children? I didn't say any bad thing. It's just that I didn't like the language of the book because it was too simple for me as a child. I needed to go back and get my dictionary to check what this word means as a child. I needed to learn, but it was too simple. Somehow doubt. But I have a question. What did you learn from him? What did, every... You say you mentioned that you read all his books, right? Yeah. So what impression what impression a, you had a, and a, every Nigerian writer, every African writer grew up on Achebe. So we all learned how to construct sentences. We all learned, learned how to characterize in books. So we learned everything from Chino Achebe. Everybody learned from Chino Achebe. Every writer learned from I don't have any issues, just the language and things fall apart. But every writer looked up to Chino Achebe. In fact, there were nights where I would sleep and I think I was Chino Achebe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's the uh, <laughs> same thing with Chim Chimamanda Adichie, you know? She's, she's um, this glorious star who's been shining all over the world now. And who, 
who who doesn't want to be like her as a writer? Who? Promoted to Mandela. Can you tell us something about your names? Because there was also a okay. need to change your name. And here I think we read again about changing names. So what is what is in the name and why did you change it? Ah, I, that was not conscious. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, most people in Hong Kong, they change their names mm -hmm. all the time. Like you come and then you meet uh, you meet a, a Shan, mm. she changes her name to Stacy. Mm. So uh, I was, I'm not a, I'm not a Christian and uh, I don't like God, the idea of God. So <coughs> once I thought that my name was related to God, something like God, which means God is great. I needed to do away with God, and then there is George as well, which is an English name, and I don't see English people answering Nigerian names. Uh, I feel it's an imperialistic complex, it's part of imperialistic uh, 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 world that we exist in. A complete phrase that, a complete phrase that doesn't mean anything. Onyeka, which is like saying, who is great? But then it used to be who is greater than God, but now who is greater than? So it could be who is greater than me, who is greater than you, who is greater than you. That's a question. So my name is a question. And then Mwilwe is also a phrase, and it's a very long one. Uh, even my, I never met my grandfather, so I never asked him. But I asked my father, and he would tell me some rubbish. So I just feel like okay, I'm just taking So my name doesn't really mean anything. My name is me. Do you have any questions or anything you would like to ask? I have a very long speech to read about <laughs> Africa and its relation with the world and blah, blah, blah. But I'm not going to bore you guys. Never. I'm not going to bore you guys. <coughs> Is simplicity a problem that bothers you in all literature? Like, do you not like simple literature or language? Simple? Simple language or simple literature. Do you not like that? I actually like it, but as a child. Hmm? I needed to go to the dictionary and take new words and learn. But right now, I like it a lot. Yeah, I like I like um, very concise, simple, you know, straight to the point writing. Not the ones that people say is deep and things like that. I don't want people to sound. There is another writer in Nigeria. He's a very nice guy. His name is Wole Shenka. He won the Nobel Prize in 1986. He's actually he has helped me a lot. Yeah. 